So this week we are replacing this mismatching broken incense burner, which I actually don't really like, with something of my own design. Let's jump right back into it, because it's, it's a frog on a lily pad. It's a bit of a cliche, I know, but uh, I just love frogs. If you have seen my art over the years, you can maybe tell that I have made a lot of frogs. I just love frogs. I've always loved them. I love the color green. I love how they croak at night. I've always been able to hear frogs croak, croak at my uh, bedroom window my whole life. And I have always loved that. I have always loved them. Yeah, so we're making, we're making a frog. Making the lily pad was pretty straightforward. I don't need to explain that, I think. But making the frog, I started out with this uh, little tinfoil ball. And I really roughly uh, put on some clay pieces that resembled the final shape, but with very much room to play. And I have actually discovered that it's a very fast way to to make my process faster. Wow, that's that's great. And I smoothed it all out. And after smoothing it, I started adding detail. I don't know why I did it like this, but it was a smart move, to be honest. Uh, for smoothing it out, I used a, used a very old paintbrush. And I would not recommend you using a newer paintbrush because it will destroy your paintbrush. So use an old one or a cheap one, I suppose. And after drying, I sanded down all the parts that weren't to my liking because I wanted this baby to be smooth and not bumpy. At this point, I was already so proud of him and I was so scared of screwing it up because I already, come on, you already love him too. He looks, he looks great. But I wanted to paint him, of course. So I painted the bottom without gesso, but that actually didn't really work out the way I wanted it. So I used gesso for all the rest, just as a little base coat. It does really help even everything out and uh, make sure the paint doesn't get sucked up everywhere. And I just try to make um, as an opaque, I think it's called, of green on the leaf as possible, just to give it the best base. Because even though I like my art blotchy, you shouldn't start out blotchy. I hope that makes sense, but it is a very much better, prettier result when you start with an even base, so you know what you're working with. I think that makes sense. But I just added a bunch of yellow, because I like warm colors, and then finished off by bringing back and adding some details, and also the edges, because they, they are important as well. And for the frog, I started out making his bottom uh, green, because it's a green frog, but also that even coat of green, but made it blotchier in the beginning on top because I was going for a lighter kind of green, more warmer tone. So the first layer wasn't that important. And that actually helped the lighter green pop more. I really like the very yellowy green, the grass green, I suppose. I think it's a very vibrant and happy color, and I really wanted this frog to look happy, of course, because frogs need to be happy. And I added a bunch more yellow around its mouth and belly, just because I think that looks more natural and, again, happier. And I gave it a little yellow weathering wash, as I like to call it. Also, I added a bit of um, human skin tone on its belly and on its little rosy cheeks. I think that adds just a little bit uh, extra. And uh, I also added some spots. I just thought that last minute and I thought it was really cute. And I 
really think it makes him pop, all those little spots. I don't know why I didn't think of that in the beginning, but... This was the most unnerving part, actually painting his eyes. I don't think I did the best job on them, to be very honest. But they're okay, and want to know a little secret? I actually use the little light, um, the reflection in the eyes to hide the fact that they're wonky. <laughs> So, if you have a little bit of a wonky eye on something, just sploosh some white in the irises and they look just shimmering and less wonky. That's a little trick. And I finished the whole project off with Mod Podge! Or the fake Mod Podge that I can buy locally. It's not sticky and it's very, very glossy. So this makes it look a bit like ceramics, and I really like that. When I painted the frog's bottom, I actually put him in a toilet roll to, uh, to dry, and it helped. So, just do what you can with the stuff that you have. And let your varnish dry very long, because even though it doesn't feel sticky or wet, it still needs to harden, so always beware of that. But here it's dry, and as you can see, it's very shiny, and I think it looks a bit like ceramics, but people who know ceramics probably disagree, but I am so very proud. I love my little dude. And here I am putting incense for the first time in his little noggin. This looks so much better. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye!